the theme of castles by the sea. In this, you're a warrior with your sand castles and building sand castles, and they're being menaced by monsters. The giant, who's a baby. The dragon, which is a kite. The monster, which is a kitten. I like that theme, especially with the gorgeous art here from Brother Wise Games. In this game, it's more of an abstract game where you're going to be building sand castles. Oh, I'll show you. In this game, you're going to build a board and the size of the squares out there is based on the number of players with some starting blocks here. Each player is going to get their own little board here that tells you how to play. You're going to get some starting blocks and some starting units that you'll have. Now, the way the units work is going to be different from game to game. You all as a group will pick. So, for example, my this big gate here can either be an arch, an aqueduct, a bridge, or a monument. Everyone's going to decide which ones you're going to use. Uh, just like the this person can be a princess, a wizard, a witch, or a sorceress. And how you put them out and how you get points for them is going to be different for each one. And so what players are going to do in their turn is you get three blocks. Plus, if you have anything that's destroyed from previous rounds, you'll get more blocks. The first block can go anywhere. After that, they have to be touching it somehow. And then it's possible that maybe you'll be able to place your units. You can place as much stuff as you are allowed to legally place. And all of that depends on the different cards. So, for example, um, this one here says this one shows you how this tunnel's placed. It's going to be like that, and nothing can be in front of it. It's going to give you two points. And you also can't place in a tile with a friendly tunnel. So you can't have more than one of them on the same side, a tunnel to another tunnel. While the guard here must be a place adjacent to at least one open wall. So if you do that, you get the points at the top. So there's going to be various amounts of points that you will get from building these blocks. And then it goes to the next person. But between rounds, you'll pick one of these three hazards. You're going to start with different hazards. This is the giant. Roar and you'll move them clockwise. The two that you didn't move, you're gonna flip a card over from their decks. And depending on how many exclamation points are now in total out there, that card will do damage. And then it tells you, like the dragon gets rid of all pieces and blocks from the top two layers, the bottom layer is not removed. And they do it to that entire row or column. So these are moving around, smashing pieces. But if your pieces get smashed, you have more pieces to build on a future turn. You end the game, with the most points, you're the winner. Now, if you get stuff that's destroyed, it's not going to score for you anymore. But keeping things on the board from round to round, each time you're basically going to look at all the cards in front of you and they're going to score based on how many of those pieces are off. So example, if I build the bridge, it's going to score me two points every turn. Each tower is going to score me one point each turn as I pull them off. So the longer I can keep peace on the board, the more points they're going to score me. At the end of the game, after a certain number of rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner. Quality components. Beautiful art. Um, there's a lot to like about this game, and I think it's going to appeal to some people. For me, I'm giving it a six. And I'll tell you why I'm not as excited about it. One is... The cards that you pick. So it's interesting you pick a, a certain group of cards. So I should show you here the, the rule book. Um, the rules are, they stop uh, here. That's it. And then the next pages here explain every card and how those cards are put onto the board in, in detail. That is a lot. That is a lot of stuff going on. And so many times... Uh, I would build something and then on like a future turn someone would say, wait a minute, that's built incorrectly. Oh yeah, you're right. Because I had to put this block here. And as you build one thing, it might make something else incorrect. And so you're constantly checking all the different cards that you have to make sure everything's built. And it felt more like work than fun. There's some interesting ideas there. And then the, the monsters moving around or the hazards moving around, that drawing cards got clunky after a while. You're constantly drawing cards, but they go through pretty quickly. The monster blows stuff up. And it felt like the, that part felt very, very random. Yes, you can pick which hazard to move around, but you're going to pick one that doesn't hurt you. So you know you're going to get hit with them all the time. And it just was to check what the monsters did, to check all the cards, to do stuff. All that overshadowed the cool part of the game, which is building those blocks and getting points. That part I like. I think that part's really interesting. But it wasn't able to overshadow that other stuff. There was just too much overhead for me to have fun with this game. But still, one of the best themes of the year, Castles by the Sea.